Readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Well, come back to. Oh, that wasn't planned. That no, was, was it? not planned. As I you think take you it, tell. Will. You no, take no, it. you take it. Go on, Ed. No. Good morning, everyone. Welcome today to the Brothers Gwyn channel. I am Ed, and this is my brother Will. Today, we'll be talking about what books we are hoping to read, listen to, devour, submerge ourselves into, dive um, and delve, dive and delve into during the month of August. August. And we are really excited. It is summer. This is the peak of it. We're both on, well, you're not really on your holidays, are you? But I kind of am, which is good, yeah. which is nice. So we've got lots, lots more time to read. Um, so yeah, should we just Let's go straight, straight in. We're going to be listening to a lot of audio books, but we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about our physical reads as well. And I think you'll find that we've got quite a wide scope of what we're reading this month. So Ed, start us off. So Please. I've been doing a bit of comfort reading. And here I have this beautiful Broken Binding edition. Um, of Valor by Papa Gwyn. This is book two of The Faith and the Fallen. Uh, if you watched our video about our July reads, then you will see that I started rereading The Faith and the Fallen, which I do every so often. Um, and I am at the moment, I am currently in the middle of Valor. I've nearly finished it actually, and it, oh, it is amazing. I love it so much. The Faith and the Fallen is a series that just holds a very special place in my heart, alongside all of other, uh, all the other of Dad's books. But The Faith and the Fallen, it to me, is just particularly the one it's like the fellowship of the ring basically of of my, Where people my have years been. exactly there's lots of um nostalgia as well uh, but it, i just adore all of the faith in the fallen and valor just reminding me of all of those moments um that are amazing and there is a spe new special edition of the faith in the fallen coming out soon by grim oak press so keep your eyes peeled yes. there'll be some pretty cool we're being artwork. spoiled for choice aren't we yeah definitely so um yeah that's another reason why i'm rereading the faith in the fallen just had to had to do it you just had to uh first up for me is uh, a clash of kings by oh, yeah. gurum george r r martin um i have never read a song of ice and fire before for a few months ago, I read A Game of Thrones for the first time, and we are near the end of watching the series one as well. Ed's watched it, but I have not watched the series before either, so this is my first time experiencing. Sadly, I have been exposed to some spoilers, but it's been a very pleasurable journey reading. And whoever the Game of Thrones... spoiled it for you, oh, I'll get them. Yeah, yeah, you'll get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got them. But yes, I'm really looking forward to this. I've heard that book two and three are even better than Game of Thrones. A huge step up. And yeah, I absolutely adore the Game of Thrones, as I've said multiple times already. And it's in our top 10 reads of 2022 so far for me. So yeah, Clash of Kings. It'll be coming soon. Uh, on to a little bit of the classical world here is Stephen Pressfield's A Man at Arms. Now, Stephen Pressfield, this is his first novel in 13 years about the ancient world. And this time he's moving away from ancient Greece and he's moving over to the ancient Romans. Um, and yeah, so I've started it. And at the moment, it doesn't quite have that magical feeling that the other two books, Gates of Fire and The Afghan Campaign by Stephen Pressfield that I've read, um, but I'm sure this will pick up as well. There's quite an interesting premise here that is kind of a, a, an ex-soldier. It reminds me a little bit of the characters from Rome, HBO's series, um, Titus Pullo, that kind of thing, like an ex-legionary um, is now in the heart of Israel and during, well, after the period of Jesus. And I think it's surrounding around a few stories of the Bible about the letters of Saul slash uh, Paul the Apostle. Mm, um, okay. So there's kind of some biblical references there, and I'm sure Stephen Pressfield will have his classic um, theological and psychological approach that he takes to writing his characters and the action that happens as well. And I just always really love the worlds that he creates. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. He actually has some reviews on the back from um, generals in the US Army. So uh, again, I think Stephen Pressfield is still <laughs> required reading. Yeah, it seems like cool. it, doesn't it? Yeah, there's no, uh, no booktubers here. <laughs> no, no booktubers there. <laughs> Maybe you will be, Ed, Maybe. on the next one. Yeah. Uh, next up, I have Until the Last by Mike Shackle. We recently had an interview with the man himself, which was an absolute honour, a pleasure, and a really fun experience, wasn't it? Uh, I absolutely love We Are the Dead and A Fool's Hope, and I recently convinced Ed to read them, uh, this, so the series The Last War, and he's loved them as well. And Until the Last came out a, a week or maybe when this video is out two weeks ago uh, and this concludes the trilogy and I cannot wait and this I got this from the Broken Binding and if you buy into the last one Broken Binding it comes with an art card well a series of art cards done by done 
I mean, illustrated, dun, dun, dun. By, dun, 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 illustrated by Mike Shackle himself because he is also a very talented artist. So, yeah, there we go. It's a chunky one, but I'm happy with that because the more pages by Mike Shackle, the better. But, yeah, really looking forward to this. It'll be bittersweet. I have no doubt I'm going to love it, but it's always sad finishing a trilogy that you love. And we're excited to see what Mike Shackle does next. Yes, we are. Um, and for me, the next one I'll be reading is David Gemmell's Troy, Lord of the Silver Bow. And... Um, yeah, I'm obviously in a bit of an ancient mood. Um, and yeah, William listened to this on Audible and he said he really enjoyed it. I love David Gemmell, but I've never read any of his historical fiction before. Um, so that's another thing that I was looking forward to checking out because we love historical fiction on this channel. And we even love it when fantasy authors move mm. over to historical fiction, which is really exciting for us as well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, David Gemmell's heroic but morally grey uh, and powerful characters, how they um, take shape in a, an actual realistic and fantastic, uh, in historical world, not fantastical. Yeah, there's some little fantastical elements, but they're minor. Cool. So it's a bit of historical fantasy, but yeah, a little but, bit. But mainly, kind of, is it like the Warlord Chronicles, that kind uh, of? A bit magical, more. A bit more. A bit more. Oh, yeah. Well, it is Greek mythology, so I, yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah, there's, there's no like um, immortal beings present or anything. Uh, but there's, 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 there's something like... Uh, no, but uh, that is mentioned that because the people obviously believe it. Yeah. Um, but it's more about uh, maybe a prophecy kind of ah. thing in the background. It yeah. doesn't take a major focus, but yeah. I mean, Achilles it's is a demigod, so it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's real. That part's not in it as much. Um, but yes, next up, I have some historical fiction, and that is going to be <gasps> me concluding. You've made it. The Saxon stories, or otherwise known as The Last Kingdom. These are the last two instalments. I've absolutely adored the series. There's been a few uh, peaks and troughs, but the peaks and the overall journey has been completely worth those little downs. And every book has been enjoyable. It's just when you compare them to the others, you thought it wasn't as good as that. But it was still a good read. Mm. And now we're getting to the final two. I am going to be listening to Sword of Kings and then I will physically read the big finale with Uhtred, Son of Uhtred, Son of Uhtred, Son of Uhtred of Bebenberg, which is Warlord. So yeah, it's going to be, I'm going to say the phrase for the second time in this video, bittersweet. Yeah. But yeah, I've been reading, I started this read about, oh, I think a year and a half ago. Mm. So yeah. Finally getting to the end of it. Uh, yeah, I think um, I've, I've seen a few people on Goodreads saying that if they binge read this series, then they get a little bit bogged down with it, don't yeah. they? And, and because there is, I mean, there definitely is a template that Bernard Cornwall sticks to. Um, and it's not like the Warlord Chronicles, which each of those books are very individual. But the Saxon stories, they can feel a little bit samey because firstly, there's 13 books. Uh, and also they do kind of take shape of, you know, Uhtred has, has a problem and he also has a big problem and he solves a little problem and moves a little bit closer to the big, you know, mm -hmm. the big kind of whole, whole overarching plot. But um, yeah, the last few books in that series are fantastic. I think if you re if you space out the time between reading them, then you will probably enjoy it far more yeah. um, rather than feeling like you're a little bit bitter. Mm. At reading what I would recommend book. is reading two in one go, then having a month or two month break and yeah. then another two. That's what so, you've done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, th I found it better than doing one a month. I thought, oh, yeah. Two, having two, and then you kind of get that fuller story, more of the character growth, you experience it more. But then you get that break as well if you if it's getting a bit monotonous. Yeah, very good, good words, Will. And Thank for you. me now, I am also going to oh, it's a big one. Get to until the last by Mike Shackle. Uh, and like William said, we absolutely loved interviewing Mike Shackle the other day, um, and it was it was so much fun. And we can't wait to read this until the last. I've recently finished A Fool's Hope, and if you've seen our July, um, a July Reads video, then you'll see how much I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So, um, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that. But it was amazing, and I'm sure until the last is going to be equally as amazing. Mm -hmm. Because Mike Shackle has a way of writing where it is the closest feeling I've, I've felt to David Gemmell and Papa Gwynn, where each chapter ends with... It feels like a major cliffhanger, but then, you know, and you're like, no, I need to get back to that character. But then you're like, ah, oh, this character's great as well. And then their chapter ends. And then you're into the next one. And yeah. you're like, oh, I need to get back to that character. But then, then you, you know, and so on and so forth. It's so exciting. And it, it is one of the most addictive fantasy series I've ever read. The set pieces are brilliant. The, and the the mixing of POVs and all of the POVs actually meeting each other through certain different scenarios. It is Abercrombie-esque where, you know, the these characters you've followed for a long time finally meet and it is so satisfying. And yeah, if you love Abercrombie, you'll love Mike Shackle. I mean, I, I see lots of people comparing Mike Shackle to, it's like a Tarantino film sometimes. Sometimes it's like a David Gemmel 
normal book, but with some really dark stuff. Sometimes it's like the first law. There's so many people that Mike Shackle could be compared to, but he's very original on his own as well. So um, yeah, hats off to him and I can't wait to finish the last four. It's gonna be an awesome journey. And I will put a link to into the last with the art cards in the description below. Yeah, Mike you... Shackle, not only is he a talented author, but he's also a talented artist because he did these as well on his own. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty really wicked. Cool. Very nice. Mm -hmm. ne <laughs> They're awesome, aren't they? Next up, I have Fall of Kings by David Gemmell. So Ed is starting the Trojan trilogy and I am going to be finishing it. So Fall of Kings is the third in the trilogy. Uh, I think that was fairly <laughs> obvious, wasn't it, by me it's concluding like it. Owen. Yeah. <laughs> if you score a goal, you have more of a chance of winning the game. It is true, isn't it? It is true. Uh, but anyway, yes, I'm looking forward to this. The second one, I think... Um, I didn't click as much as the first half of the second book, but then the second half of Shield of Thunder was absolutely brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where this third instalment takes me. I'm pretty certain uh, I know part of the direction knowing the story of Troy, but I think David Gemmell will do it in a really interesting way, as he has done so far. I'm sure he will. We believe in... Mr. David Gemmell. Mr. David Gemmell. Uh, and then the next book I will be reading is oh, another beautiful Broken Binding edition. Oh. Pretty good bookstore, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah. are. I wonder who has a discount and what code book is for that? them. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, this is Ruin by Papa Gwyn, the Faith in the Fallen book three. This is, I think, probably the most popular Faith in the Fallen book, purely because the title Ruin is very apt for what for your emotions at the end when you read literally the last page. It ruined me. Um, and, it, and there is actually a picture I recently found on my phone of me laying on my bed sobbing after reading uh, Ruin and um, and. Yeah, I don't think Dad was upset that I was crying. I think he was actually really he happy. He was like, mission achieved. Shame. Yeah, which is actually a bit out of order, to be honest. I don't know why I still talk to him, but, um, but yeah. You got past it. Ruin is amazing. I just I can't wait to get there again because I love it so much. Um, uh, like I said earlier about Bala, I love The Faith in the Fallen. Um, please let us know in the comments below. What is your favourite Faith in the Fallen book? We'll have to, we're will have we going to do our top 10 moments of Ruin in the next couple of months, which will be exciting. I think you'll, you might be re-reading or re-listening to it, yeah. which will be pretty fun. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that video. And next up for me, I have Lord of the Flies to remind me um, that I should never be in charge. <laughs> uh, and, um, anyone could eat you. Yeah, basically. Uh, I've never read Lord of the Flies. I know Ooh. kind of what happens. That's his golem. He's not going to appreciate that, is he, Ed? I mean, that is terrifying. Little rabbits is put him off the shelf. I'm sorry, golem. Oh, no. There we go. Order has been established Restored. once again. Yeah, of course. And all of the fires never read it, but I kind of know the message. Uh, don't let children take charge because it would be anarchy. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm looking That's forward to trying teacher. this out. <laughs> yeah, and it's quite a, it's quite a short read as well, so I think it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah, put that in a good reads review. Um, the next book for me is now, I recently, basically Will and I this year have been challenging each other to read certain books that the other person loves, books that they probably wouldn't pick up on their own anyway. Um, and I recently read The Silmarillion, which William was the book that William recommended to me. He has read Gates of Fire, which is a book that I recommended to him. And now... Um, uh, you also picked up We Are The Dead. I also picked up We Are The Dead. So I've read two of yours, and I'm going to read the third now, which is Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Now, William uh, absolutely adores Pat Barker's writing. I think he you read Regeneration, yep. um, which is about Secrets of Sue and the First and World Wilfred War. Wilfred Owen, yeah. Wilfred Owen, those poets, are fam very World famous War poets of the First World War, the Great War as it is known. Um, and now this is um, Pat Barker's Troy series, but focusing on, I believe, the women of Troy. Briseis is the main um, perspective. Briseis is the main perspective. So that's really exciting. It's a, it's a you know, I'm reading that Trojan, uh, Trojan book by David Gemmell, which I'm sure, knowing David Gemmell, would probably focus on the male characters as as well um, like Achilles and Hector and all that and whatnot. yeah but this I think this book will take a little bit of a different approach um, and a different type of story writing which should be really exciting as well for me uh, and you know reading books that we probably wouldn't pick up straight away uh, as exactly. well so yeah thank you Will I look and you love the first this. paragraph didn't you yeah I've yeah, read the first you. paragraph it is it is really cool shall I read it do it great Achilles brilliant Achilles shining Achilles godlike Achilles how the epithets pile up we never called him any of those things we called him the butcher. 
Pretty cool, isn't it? What an opening line. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and on Ed's recommendation, I'm going to be doing the same, and I'm going to be reading The Wolf Sea by Rob Lowe. Uh, I, about two years ago, I listened to The Whale Road, and it didn't click with me, but you said, give book two a chance, mm. see how you think after that. So The Whale Road is not an accurate representation of this series. I think I love The Whale Road still, but the first two times I read it, I was just it, I just felt a bit all over the place. But when you get to The Wolf Sea, um, this is when Rob Lowe really comes to shine. Okay. Uh, if you love Giles Christian, Rob Lowe was a big influence on him as I a writer. And, you know, Bernard Cornwell was on the front as well saying it's amazing. So Pretty cool. Are you going to argue with Bernard? Are you really going to argue <laughs> with I'm going to give it a shot and I really hope that it clicks. With I, I know it will. I you know, know it will. I know it will. This is also Dad's favourite Viking series as well. It so, is. Um, yeah, if you want it some is. cool historical fiction, check out the Oath Sworn series by check Rob it out Lowe. Now. Um, and the next one for me, I will be reading another anticipated release, which is Print Priest of Crowns. And I will be, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, we'll both be doing that, which is by Peter McLean. We actually interviewed Peter McLean last year. I, I believe did. it was last year. Yeah, it was. So long ago. Um, but he was such such a kind and sweet guy, and he was, you know, it's awesome to interview him. Um, he has some great answers as well, and also he made us really scared and hyped for Priest of Crowns. So and we're so happen looking to forward to yeah. seeing what happens to Thomas Piety and the rest of the gang. Uh, we are. It's exciting, but it's also really scary. Yeah, because this is uh, the finale of a tetralogy, I think it, uh, one of our re uh, viewers said yeah. um, a four book series is called. Yeah. So, yeah, it's the final one, and uh, we're scared. So, but we'll both we be are. doing that. But we'll we? enjoy the, yeah. the fear. Uh, next, I have another release coming out this month, and it is going to be Garden of Empire by JT Greathouse. Ah, you uh, loved so the first one, didn't you? I What's did. The, the Hand of the Sun King, and I thought it was brilliant. Um, a really fantastic release that needs more attention. I've not heard that many people have actually read it, so... Um, or in this book circle, anyway, the, the kind yeah. of little the, the little book community we're in. As you um, scroll on Twitter. Yeah, more people need to talk about The Hand of the Sun King, and I cannot wait for The Garden of Empire. Very nice. And the last one for me is another final book in a series, and this is the book Dreaming the Serpent by Amanda Scott, which is about Boudicca, and this will be the final book, so I think we... We know what's going to happen. Um, so I've, I've wanted to put it off for a while, but Dad said, you just need to bite the bullet. And, you know, there were bits, there, the highs in this are amazing. Um, but obviously the last hundred pages, it's probably like, you know, watching the last two hours of King Kong, where it's just heartbreak over and over. The last two hours of King Kong. Yeah, that's. I'm pretty sure that's when it begins. No, so when one of the dinosaurs bites his hand. No, it's like a five-hour film. Come on. Is it? Is it a no, long? I think I, it's like three and a half hours. Really? Yeah. I never knew it. Was no, that when long. he gets bitten on the hand, you know, poor him. <laughs> I love King Kong. So much. Yeah, it does love King Kong. Yeah. Uh, next up, I have. Uh, so I think I have two more. Um, I have the complete Roman Army by Adrian. No. Yeah, Adrian Goldsworthy. It is by Adrian Goldsworthy. It is. Um, it is, mm -hmm. it is. Um, and yes, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Mm. I'm in a bit of an ancient Roman slash ancient Greek mood and I'm mm. reading quite a few... Uh, Why are you reading all these ancient novels, Will? For and non-fiction. bit of research. What for? Uh, uh, well, I, I was thinking, oh, I'd like to do a bit of writing, you know. Uh, but I thought I'd actually something maybe inspired by this kind of culture. And mm -hmm. so I thought, let's try this out. It sounds pretty cool. And yeah. It does sound cool. Yeah. And I will be trying it in August. And that reminds me, I need to pick up another book right now. And alongside that, I've been reading Fall of Carthage. Yeah, The Fall of Carthage by Adrian Goldsworthy as well. As you can see from the little pencil sticking out, I am near the end now. And yeah, it's been a very um, entertaining... No, it's an interesting read. There's been some lulls where I'm like, it, there's some of the details. Obviously, it's a full picture on what we know of the three Punic Wars uh, between uh, the great uh, empires of ancient Rome and then Carthage. They're the two dominant powers at that time. Um, and so there's certain aspects which I'm like, oh, I'm not interest in, as interested in that part. But overall, it's really interesting. And yeah, Hannibal. Wow. Yeah, don't tell Hannibal you're not interested it, it, in him. It, 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 it me. <laughs> Hannibal shows he may not have been the nicest of most of these generals, you don't want them as your friend really, but it's very, very intriguing and mm. unique man indeed from what we know of him. So was he with the rival of Scipio? 
Uh, well, I've not got to the end of the Second Punic War yet. So far, I've had his whole campaign in Italy, uh, which is pretty dominant in on his journey across the Alps, but he just couldn't get that final victory. The Romans had a lot of resources, so uh, okay. they could outlast. But then, so, yeah, it's just coming to the rise of Scipio, so I think I know nice. what's going to happen Scipio, next. Is it at Scipio Africanus? Africanus, that's it, yeah. Mm, nice, very nice. So, yeah, that's them two, and then you don't have any more. I've you? finished my list. So, I have one last one. Sorry oh. to be hugging or hogging all this oh. time. Gideon the Ninth. I'm going to be listen, listening oh. to on Audible. So nice. it's been in our path quite a while, hasn't it? But when we interviewed to... Gerald Crombie, he mentioned Gideon the Ninth. He, didn't he? he did say Gideon <laughs> the Ninth nice was side. a recent fantasy book that he uh, nice he little side long glance. And it. you know, when I spoke to Gerald Crombie at Go Dance Fest a couple of years ago, he uh, he said he you know he doesn't really get too much chance to read fantasy. Mm. So that obviously must be a really good book. Um, especially if Joe enjoyed it. So. Yeah, so yeah, I'll be trying that out during August. And there, there we go. That is my ambitious August TBR pile finished and yours as well. Yeah. Thank you everyone who has watched. Let us know what you're planning to read this month. Do any of these intrigue you? Will you pick up We Are The Dead? The answer is yes. And uh, the whole of the Last yeah. War trilogy. Link will be in the description below. Thank you everyone for watching. Truth and Courage, The Brothers Gwyn. Truth and Courage from The Brothers Gwyn. Go and read The Last War. Thank you.